Hey everyone, how's it going? So we've got a Wednesday the 11th of May Steam Deck Steam update. So here's some of the features they've added. Some of them are actually quite exciting. So when connected to an external display, Steam Deck interface is now scaled to virtual 1280 by 800 resolution. Now that one's actually quite cool uh, because I found that it kind of defaults to 1280 by 768, which is 16 by 9 to 16 by 10. So making an actual capture is a bit fiddly. What I'm hoping is they might add um, screen mirroring off the back of this because that would actually make capturing while playing really, really easy. Fixed on screen keyboard and magnifier interstitial not taking input on first launch of some games. Now, this one's actually pretty interesting because. I found that while playing, sometimes the Steam controller doesn't actually kick in. So you might have to launch a game two or three times to actually get access to the Steam controller to actually play the thing. Unfortunately, as I'll show later, that issue hasn't actually been fixed yet. Players can now set game-specific performance settings. Now this is kind of huge. Previously, when testing different games, I'd have to turn on and off the 30 frames per second lock or change the power requirements and it would be global. But now, well, as it says, it's per game. So if there's a game that doesn't have an FPS cap, I can just set it for that game and we're good. If there's a game that uses a ton of power because it's just always trying to do its best, I can limit the power usage and it'll just work itself out in the wash. This, I think, could be absolutely brilliant for the battery life, especially if they start adding default presets. By default, games will use the system performance settings. If a per game settings are toggled on, a profile for the currently running title is created. Any edits will be saved and automatically applied when the game is launched. You can always toggle this off and go back to system default settings or reset to system default settings at any time. Absolutely fantastic. While there are some changes for the keyboards, uh, for non-ASCII characters and stuff like that, one thing that is missing is the escape key. Also function keys, but the escape key is what lets you skip cutscenes in certain games, and I've had to sit through Borderlands unskippable cutscene because of it. And while we're on the subject of things that are missing, the cloud saves don't work for every game. So for the Tomb Raider games, I'm having to start from scratch. For Borderlands, I think I'm having to start from scratch as well. Uh, Superland, that worked fine. And I don't know if... I've no idea why some games work and others don't, it can't be to do with Linux versions because there is no Linux version of Tomb Raider. So the two takeaways for me from here are the possibility of having a screen mirror option because the resolutions and speed will match and the option of changing power and frame rate options per game. Let's test that out now actually. So one quick install of an update. And here we have per game profile, creating that creates a new profile. So it'll say using Shadow of the Tomb Raider profile. And then you can set your 30 frames per second, which you can see reflected. And you can set half rate shading, uh, thermal power limit, manual GPU clock control, the scaling filters, and all of the other little tweaky options that were prior to this update, uh, global options. I should probably apologize for the lack of sound from the Steam Deck for that first section. Uh, for some reason, the capture input just doesn't seem to send sound. I'm docking it, but I'm getting nothing out of it. So I need to check my cables and see what's going on. So here we see the first issue. The gamepad configuration is showing no devices. Now, obviously I didn't notice this at the time. So I click play. And I'm gonna to go to play the game or navigate the menu. None of the buttons work. So then I have to tap the screen to kind of quit out and relaunch it again. As you can see from the second attempt, the Steam controller was actually a recognized input and everything worked smoothly. Not enough to last the night. Oh, need to gather more. So that's it for now. Uh, pretty good update. I'm going to go through and play a bunch of games at some point and make a video where I change the power allocation and the frame rate to see if I can get a nice balance of battery life to performance. Uh, I think the three Tomb Raid games might be a good 
point to start with that because they all use between 19 and 26 watts so if I can get those down to sort of 15 but still get 30 frames per second and have it look good that might be something interesting but let me know what you think if there's any games you want to see me play on Steam Deck uh, let me know I'm still setting up the nicer camera setup I'm still working on the audio I'm still trying to get screen mirroring set up as well uh, but hopefully I'll get all these things sorted out very soon and we'll have a lot more content for you. Please like and subscribe and as ever, thanks for watching and stay safe.